Hey, TBR family. Welcome to Season 2 of the Banded Retreat Podcast. I'm B, and this is a family-friendly podcast about all things outdoors. I'm Ryan, and the Banded Retreat's mission is to bring faith, family, and legacy into everything we do. And let's get ready for another episode with you. What's up, TBR family? I am so excited to be here with B here as spring has sprung man first day of springs are already happened and so we're here and in the midst of it in spring i love springtime because you know you begin to hear the birds chirping outside you begin to see uh flowers just coming and spring is uh you see new life and all that uh, it does bring a little duck depression in yeah. <laughs> uh but it is always good to have spring it's new life fresh start and those things and so we're in the midst of spring and that means turkey season oh, that yeah. means smallmouth fishing that means striper fishing that means all those things that we we love as just being uh, outdoorsmen in general and so uh it, it's 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 great to be a part of that and and to see that season come into full swing yeah the uh it's been it's been so cold though here the last couple of weeks you know and then now it's finally spring on the calendar is finally here and now we're starting to get warmer weather but uh, i've had the boat out a couple of times been out on the lake and yeah. trying to test some th- things out that we'll talk about here later but uh you know, I've seen a lot of pictures of a lot of smallmouth, like you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, people are just slaying them right now. Yeah. I guess the the temperature in that water is just really starting to affect them, and um, you know, so their spawning's coming and all that stuff. So in it, in smallmouth, just in general, they're the the spawning kind of it like hits like really quick. Oh, like yeah. stripers, um, there's kind of like a period um, in between, like there's like a week week or two maybe and then smallmouth it's like overnight so yeah it's like really quick yeah they get on those beds pretty quick and start doing that and we're we're a little bit before that but trout season and i mean all those things are happening yeah in the midst if you're a fisherman you you love spring and i, I was i was following um it's actually a, a local new river trophy outfitters and uh i i knew uh, i knew the guy who runs it his name's troy stifler and anyway uh he used to be with the red cross and we used to do a bunch of blood drives with him but anyway but i always follow him and he always gives it seems like he's daily out there fishing they're catching musky they're catching small mouths and big ones and uh it's always good because he always says man it's right here in their back door and yeah. west virginia is known for that well that's what you know you and i were on the phone the other day about you know when we talk so many times about how you know that we are duck hunters but you know duck hunting is really something that's not very prevalent around here but one a couple things that are is turkey season absolutely and turkeys and smallmouth and muskies yeah I mean, it's crazy that the river is full of fishermen and people travel all over all over the world just to come here for that yeah you know? so i mean we we're starting to focus a little bit more on that i'm i've got another i've got a boat kind of add to our tbr collection you know you've got you've got yours and then um i just bought one uh, not too long ago so we'll we'll kind of dive in some of that but you were you know kind of going back on turkeys yeah. we were after service today i heard you had the turkey call yeah. in your mouth yeah, yeah trying to warm it up well, and- I, absolutely <laughs> you know uh for those of you who might not know or or do know i'm a I'm a pastor at a church. I think we were, we were close to 800 this morning. And, and after I got done preaching, I came back to the office, grabbed the turkey call, and me and a couple guys out there were practicing uh, <laughs> our putts and uh, just getting ready for, for turkey season. You know, it's uh, I, I was talking to one guy. He's a, a little older gentleman here at the church. He's turkey hunted all his life. And he was, he was giving me some pointers and just talking about how, you know, he's already hearing them gobble. And West Virginia season comes in. In my opinion, a little too late. We most yeah. of our seasons typically do that for whatever reason. I love West Virginia, but our seasons are a little late. But Virginia actually comes in. It hits it right on the head, baby. And I it, mean, it it really gets it. I, I, I we've talked about it the last couple of times, but I killed uh, up until last year. I killed on open day every you know every season in Virginia that I've hunted down there. So it's they they get it right. They get the mixture right. But I mean that's not to say that that you know down in my area is the same of of when it's hot here. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I mean it, it does seem it does seem like West Virginia is a little late and in talking to other hunters it seems like they agree with that. Yeah, yeah, because you're already hearing them gobble and they're already starting to get hot. Those um, gobblers are getting hot for the females. And so, I mean, that's what you want. You're trying to trick them and manipulate <laughs> them to come in to your call that's not half as good. And tur- turkey season, turkey in general, you know, typically the female would come to the male 
but you're trying to get the male to go to the female. So, I mean, you're trying to contradict nature even, you know, and so that's why you're trying to call and move just a little bit maybe and, and set up because it is contrary that typically when that gobbler gobbles, that hen starts coming to them. And so it's different for us as hunters. We're trying to be yeah. silent and still and, you know, trying to make sure that we give us the best yelp we can or kiki yeah. or whatever you yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you can give it's bird season but it's a different bird season it is you know <laughs> you got them over decoys and uh, yeah but yeah i mean you know it, you you mentioned it earlier but it's it's a depressing when you go out there on the water especially on the lake this week i saw probably 100 120 ring necks yeah. out on clater lake this week and uh you know they were piled up heavy and that's probably one of the larger groups i've ever seen out there on the lake and I actually, I think I either FaceTimed you or yep. I just took a video for you so you could see it, just a little bit of the yeah of I, what I was seeing. Well, yeah, and and I think a couple of weeks before you were out on the boat, it was after season, and uh, you saw those blue, blue wings wing teal. and saw oh, uh, yeah. wood ducks already. Yeah, I guess there's a return migration probably because we we had a cold spell, but we also had, I mean, it's it's seventy some degrees today. Yeah, maybe touching eighty. I mean, it, which is. Un, uh, last year, literally on this weekend, it snowed here. Uh, it, and so it's like, you just never know. It's four season country right here in West Virginia and Virginia. So, I mean, it could be smoking hot today and we could get snow tomorrow. When you're, it's, it's throwing everything off. I mean, you know, yeah. you're, you weren't, you weren't mowing last week, but you're mowing this week. Yeah, and, that's right. Uh, you know, then you take so many leads off of different things. Like, you know, uh, somebody was talking about stripers hit when those, those red, bushes out yeah, there yeah. on the highway start to bud and um you know those are a little bit later or you know they they want to open and then it got cold again yeah. and then they went you know and now they're fully open and so it's kind of throwing some things off but uh you know you take a lot of those signals just just off mother nature itself yeah. and uh, you know you and i talked about those before but um but yeah i mean it, it's been it's been a wild a wild season hopefully looking forward to more winter or for more warmer weather yeah yeah because uh you know <laughs> it's funny because when you're in the winter and you're a duck hunter you're like man i just wanted to freeze out no, no, as cold. cold as as yeah. cold as it can get and Bring then snow. that day you know february or for me end of february hits and you're right into march and you're like man it is freezing yeah, i know here. i can't wait <laughs> yeah it's like it's the the flip uh the switch flips in your mind and uh <laughs> you want it to be uh, warm, warm again, warm again. Let's, yeah. let's go summer you yeah know? <laughs> absolutely and uh you know uh tur turkey season as for a lot of people and probably a lot of listeners in general it is an enjoyable time you know i know people i mean they spend their whole lives doing that and and, and it's it's been exciting for me i i started running a mouth call and uh once you can get past that gag reflex you can start yeah. really i mean some people can't get past it i've another old timer i was talking to at church he's probably in his 70s he's like man i just i just box call me and that's just that's what i've learned on and he's like i could never get the mouth call running and so you know whatever method it is i think the key is no matter if it's fishing outdoors uh, like troy says let's fish or us you know happy hunting or whoever it might be the key is get outdoor and doors and enjoy it it's springtime it's a lot of fun uh get out and experience life with somebody or or and just get out there and hunt and fish and and uh spend some time in god's nature because it's beautiful especially in this time of year so. yeah it's an exciting time and you know uh I, we've kind of teased on it and talked about it a little bit uh on a couple of the past episodes but i bought a boat back in october of last year and really my 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 primary focus when buying this boat was try to make it try to buy a boat that's good for duck hunting primarily and then that i can fish from you know pretty easily and how i set up the um you know different accessories for fishing and things like that so i've really over the last five months i've really tried to hone in try to make the perfect boat yeah. you know perfect river boat something that can go out um, on the lake and go bigger water as well and get us from point A to point B a little a little quicker and um, something that can hold more people so we can do yeah. this with more people. So I've had this, like I've been developing this kind of a, a like a design of this boat, but it all started with a Facebook special. Yeah, uh, I got a boat uh, just about 30 minutes from where I live and uh, it popped up there. And now granted, you know, I was looking for a boat two years before this. Yeah. And then I started really looking hard because I was like, okay, I'm just going to settle. I'm going to get whatever comes comes to me. That's a good price. Yeah. And I'll just figure it out. And then I'll go on later and, and get a, a different boat. But 
this one came up uh, on a, I think it was like a Thursday morning or something. Yeah. And I called it uh, pretty early and I messaged the guy and I'm like, hey, this is this is the boat I've been looking for. It was a, it's an 18 foot Aluma Craft. Um, it it kind of had a wonky um, console on it, but yeah. I knew that I could fix all that. But it was it looked like a good solid boat. Uh, had a jet boat and jet motor on it, jet right. outboard, and everything looked just good. And he had a really good price on it, so I said, "Hey, hold it for me. I'll be up there, you know, Saturday uh, to come look at it." And so we started talking. It was, you know, just the typical. Yeah. Um, he's trying to sell it, and I'm trying to buy it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the Facebook marketplace. Hey, right. Is this your bottom dollar? No. Oh, but yeah. yeah, back and forth. And the nature of that, it, it's just. I mean, especially here in it's Appalachia, <laughs> it's, it's it's it is so tough. And it, it, and and boat prices are as high as they've ever been. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, COVID put everything. I mean, car prices are through the roof. Camper prices are through the roof. Boat prices, they joined in, baby. <laughs> They're yeah. through the roof. <laughs> and it's crazy, and, not, and nothing's really changed. Yeah. You know, I mean. But but that's a that's an economics lesson that yeah. we can get into later. But the uh the this boat was really set up um what I could envision being a perfect boat for what I was looking for. Yeah. So tell the guy I'm like, listen, man, I'll I'll send you hundred and fifty bucks today to hold it, take it off. Take it off there, don't want anybody yeah, yeah. else getting to it. He's like he's a good old boy. He's like, you know, I'll I'll hold it. You come up here tomorrow and I'll I'll hold it. So I went up there on a Friday, uh met him with my uncle. Uh, and we did a compression test on it and we took it out. I mean, the thing ran flawless. It was, it was great experience. The guy's a great guy. Right. Um, and so we had him, me, my uncle and his dog. So it's kind of giving me a, you know, good, a good indication of, of three guys and a dog. Yeah. Um, and so it ran really well. And so we, we ended up doing the deal, the guy, you know, and I still talk to him today. He's a really great guy. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, I bring it back home and, you know, I brought it up here and you and I started talking about how, how we can make this thing into what we wanted to make it. Yeah. Because it was a, and, and just to clarify for everybody, it's a 90 horsepower motor, but it's a 65, it's a 90, 65 cause right. it's a jet. It's 90 at the top and 65 at the bottom for, for jet, motor. for the jet. It's a jet motor, uh, which is very, I mean, that's a strong jet and it's a console at this time. So we start yeah. proceeding in talking about how yeah. can we refabricate, fabricate this. Well, and it, it was set up to be like a bass boat where you're you have a side console. And so what the guy had done and he told me why he's there, he said, you know, I was trying to trying to open it up to where I can have as much space as possible for my family. And so, and, and he had just real quick, he had taken the console out of the, the side and then he put it on the back deck and he drilled down through the back deck and put square tubing in, in like a plate with a, with a steering wheel and, and a throttle and, and yeah. his kill switch and all that stuff on the back. And I'm a big, bigger guy. So, uh, you know, whenever I took it out by myself, it was just, it was such a, it just seems like so dangerous Yeah, yeah. because you're standing on the back deck trying to drive this boat. And so I already knew that I was going to be taking that out. And, um, and so there was this, this conflict, uh, like internal conflict for me of what I want, do I want the stick or do I want to go tiller or do I want to go center console type right. thing? So, uh, ended up, um, coming down to where I, I just wanted a tiller. So as that conversation happened, um, we, we went ahead and took out the whole back deck. Yeah. Um, so now it's open all the way to the transom. It's kind of like set up like a utility boat now. Right. And I'll show pictures on, on YouTube of this as we're talking through this. And uh, for you guys who are listening on podcasts, you can go to our Instagram or our Facebook to see, see these pictures. But um, so now it's open all the way to the transom. Um, it's got a rod box to the left and then it's got plenty of storage and plenty of space up, up top. On, yeah. On and, 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 and so, uh, B brought it to the church actually where I was at. And I remember we were, we were outside in the parking lot and we just sit in it, mm -hmm. you know, cause like, I think a lot of people, they don't take the time to actually think about, you know, you just buy something and you try to, but we literally, I mean, B bought it. We came in, it's like, what's the best scenario? And we, because there was a lot of things, even though we ripped out the back, you know, that's what we ended up doing. We were trying to get what's the most spa floor space we can get on that boat so that we can hunt three comfortably, have the dog there, everybody's safe, mm -hmm. everybody's good. We got good swinging lanes, and we get to the spot well. And so we we literally figuring it all out in yeah. our minds before you went buying everything. Right, and in my, you know, to have that experience is, is uh, 
you know, it's worthwhile. And I think that there's going to be some things that we'll learn over the next couple of seasons of like, yeah. could have done this better, or could modify this. And, but for the most part, I think, you know, even setting in it, like you said, we, we kind of walked through it all and kind of shared opinions of what would be best. So, so anyway, you know, kind of, kind of fast forward to, uh, to, to got all the boat modifications done. We've got it all opened up. It's a nice open concept boat. And then the rest of the mods are really just, you know, accessories that I've done. So, um, one of the accessories that I did was I, the Southern LED lights. And yep. I know that's a popular company probably in the, in the duck hunting world. Um, so I've done the, the interior snake tubes, right. the exterior snake tubes. I've got the, the backup lights or the rooster tail lights on the back. And then I've got the, uh, the ultimate duck boat light. So apparently that's, that's supposed to be the brightest duck boat light that you can get, which I mean, I haven't had it out really in the dark yeah, yeah. yet, but um, but I've turned it on. It's just super bright. Yeah, and and I think part of the thing me and B started talking. You know, I've I've got that. Um, I've got the duck coffin that we talk about numerous times, and and uh, uh, I've got that boat, and it, it's you know, it's it's it was my great grandmother's, and we've talked about that on a podcast. But the thing is, is I I, I told you that hey, don't rush to get your boat done. Where yeah. we can hunt and there's a lot of modifications and I'll tell you and I'll tell the listeners, don't try to fabricate the boat in buck in duck season and think you're going to get it out. It's just it's too hard. So literally, when you're thinking about fishing and turkey hunting, now is the time. It's warm outside. You can fabricate your boat right now, e way easier. You can paint your boat. You can modify your boat way easier right now. Like yesterday, I took my duck blind off. I began to clean up all the things because duck season's hard on 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 a boat, you know, yeah. in general. So I took off the blind that we made. I took off everything. I started cleaning it up. I propped it up um, to get the front elevated, sprayed it off, you yeah. know, because it just everything. I got all my duck decoys out, got all the batteries out of them so they don't seize up. over. Because what happens is inevitably in September, you haven't done that. And yeah. so it, this is a, the friendly reminder <laughs> to man to get the mojo out, take the batteries out. Hey, get the, the flickers, take the batteries out. Just all of it. Just get ready because if not, you'll just throw it. All in there, muddy. September comes, and you're like, "Oh man, this." And sucks. you'll be that guy. We yeah, <laughs> yeah, you'll, be that, you'll be that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, a, so. it's a good reminder. It is yeah. a good reminder. So, um, you know, and I still haven't done that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm reminding you, B. Hey, yeah, thanks. but but no, as he fabricates the boat, you know, I told him he didn't have to fabricate the boat right there in the in the moment. That hey, take your time. If we get it, it's fine. If not, we'll we'll uh, we'll uh, hunt together. Yeah. And then when fishing season comes, you'll be ready. Yeah, and it took the pressure off, you know. Absolutely. So I I didn't get it out as much as I wanted to. I just didn't. Um, but you know, through that, I guess it was I guess it was uh, probably December, January. My mother in law actually came yeah. over and she helped me paint that boat. And uh, for you men that are probably listening to this, you're like, oh my gosh, I could never paint a boat with my mother in law. Well. My mother-in-law is a beast, man. So <laughs> she can, she helps me uh, with a lot of different things, and uh, so she came over and uh, and I and I, I want to touch on this kind of briefly, but yeah. I stripped the whole boat. It was like a it was like a brownish color. Stripped the whole boat with that like jet fuel stripper or whatever, um, and and then sanded everything, grinded all the the rough spots down. And uh, what I did was I ordered paint that Red Leg suggests, and right. it comes directly from Sherwin Williams. Mm -hmm. And there is a so that you've got Sherwin Williams that you see at your house that does interior stuff, but there's a whole line of of boat uh, paint that Sherwin Williams sells. So you've got to call the right place. Right. And so when you get on the phone with those guys, they know all the Red Leg stencils, they know all the Red Leg colors, they they work together to to make this happen. And so I learned through that process and the guys tell me, you know, you got to have 65 degrees on the surface and make yeah. it adhere right. Uh, you, you want to, you want to sand it, you want to, um, put in that base layer and, and all that. So, so we get, we get down to it and I will tell you firsthand, it is a very expensive process when it comes to that paint. But what I'll say is when I did this in December or January and I did it in a building and, and I made sure that building was warm and we were circulating air and, and try to do the best that I could with what I had. Right. Um, we, that, that paint was amazing. I mean, yeah. it, it was like, we go one pass on one side of the boat, come back to the front and it is dry as a bone. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing the way that that thing did and it stuck and it looks great. So 
um, it was it was a it was a primer uh, paint that was green, and then we came back over with a black like a matte black, which looked awesome. Like I was, yeah. I, I like I like all my accessories black. You yeah, know, yeah. My trucks black. The dog kennels, new dog kennels black. I like it all. Yeah, so yeah. I was like really like oh man, I just want to leave it like that. But I, I, I had this vision in mind. So uh, my my mother in law. And I put those stencils. It was a honeycomb stencil over top right. uh, of that, and it was like a uh, it was like a tan color on yeah. the honeycomb. And then uh, you let all that dry. Which, like I said, by the time you come around to the other side of the boat, you're ready to go. Yeah. And so we uh, then we took the second stencil, which was kind of like the I mean, they call it wraith. So if you're looking at if you're looking at these online, it's wraith pattern. And I went with what they suggested as far as the colors. And so we went over that with a stencil, and it, and it was manual. It was tough labor. Yeah. I mean, it was tough labor. But the finished product of that looks just like Sick of Timber. Sick of Timber. I mean, yeah. and it, it looks just like it. And I posted a video the other day of me and my, my timber stuff, and it looks just like it. Yeah. Um, one thing that I did have to, have to do is I came back with, a, with black and just kind of brushed some of the places where I felt like were kind of imperfect imperfected or like sharp and yeah kind of cleaning up the rough edges kind of thing so just like shadows of black to go through there and uh but it looks great i mean i love the way that it looks it looks and it turned out so all that turns out great so then put the lights on there and then i came back one of the last things that i did was i laid down hydro turf and that stuff is a bear to put on oh yeah you know i i looked at a couple of videos um, on that i think it was i think it was tiny boat nation that did one and there's a guy that did it for a living like yeah. he put that hydro turf down for a living and their suggestion was kind of throw your stencils out the out the window and just kind of lay it up there and then cut around the edges and i think that that's fine but um you know i did that one by myself and i was kind of getting impatient and so mine's kind of rough on the edges but it was just it was a it was not an easy process. Well, and the thing is, is as if if you decide as a listener to maybe to do it yourself or whatever, when you get in a boat and especially in a modification project and all those things, boat lines aren't straight. They no. just aren't. I mean, so if you can have every stencil, but it's not square, Nothing it's not a straight it. line. It's, it's just it's not. It's a boat. It's, I mean, it's it, literally that's. Yeah. And Nothing in a boat square. Yeah. And so to try to lay out something that way, you, you basically, you, you have to modify it in process. Yeah. And, and I think they wanted you to actually bring it down if you actually, oh, yeah. I mean, that was their, the big sellers like, Hey, this is difficult. Bring it down and we'll do it for you. But that's Florida. Not, yeah. And yeah. it, it's just not an option. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I did that, got it on there. I mean, it looks as good as it could. And then, you know, just like extra stuff that I did during that modification part, was I put I wanted all the the uh, batteries to be stored up front, so I, I did lose a, I lost two storage places. One was uh, for all my batteries, and then all my fuse box and my switches. And, and one thing that Southern LED sells is a switch panel with a, like a motherboard on it. And yeah. There's one control wire that goes to your uh, to your your like your little switch panel right there, and it's all waterproof and cased and. Like it was nice. It, it is so nice. I mean, it was it was three hundred and fifty bucks. But I'm telling you, man, if you're looking at trying to do something like that for your boat, it's super simple. They've done it. They've encased everything for you. Uh, it's worth every penny of that. Yeah. Um, and then I got I got lithium batteries uh, for those. And then in the other storage compartment that I was saying that I lost I lost uh, the storage part of it. I put in um, a twelve gallon. Uh, gas tank right so i put that all there i wanted to hide it kind of you get it away from the back again the point was to try to basically open up another seat for a fourth guy yeah and and plus you know some people ask man why would you put the gas in the front and, and then pipe it to the back but part of that was even for the balance of weight we're yep. shifting you're shifting everything to the back to a tiller and uh, even though you got a jack plate and, and it's hydraulic and all those things are uh, to be able to tilt and trim, we're just trying to get some weight in the front. So all the oh, yeah. batteries are in the front. Uh, it, but, you know, a lithium battery is not the same. It, oh, it's it, unbelievable. It, yeah, it's, it, they're light, yeah. yeah. And so, but all that's up front. But a 12-gallon gas tank up front, is was, that's a lot of weight. Yeah, it is. And, and we, uh, you know, it's funny – we we're talking kind of generically yeah but we, i mean it was you're talking about months of just discussion of how this thing was going to be designed because we went from 
from a center console to a stick to a um, to a t- back to a tiller back to a console and then it's like well here's your pros and here here's your cons well with a with the front console i could stand up front and get that nose down quick yeah yeah you know all the way to up front and then we were talking about well you got the versatility of a tiller and so there's a lot of factors that oh, came yeah. into this thing like you said we sat in it multiple times we talked through it multiple times and you know at the end of the day uh you know there's a lot of perks to it and if you look at i was kind of so prodigy is is a good way oh, to kind of explain it so I, I was looking at a prodigy before i bought this facebook special and uh they're just they're they're very very nice very high priced boats um and so i kind of looked at that as as like an outline of what i wanted but they those are those are set up more so probably for duck hunting only but this is gonna this one's gonna serve me for striper fishing down in Tennessee, yeah. where we go and, and we'll go at the end of this month. Um, but it's uh, you know I I'm I'm proud of it. I'm happy with it, and uh, we're proud to show it off. And uh, a lot of thought that went into it, and it's not just my thoughts. It was a lot of other people's inputs. And I've you know I, I ran into a guy down at the lake the other day, and he came back up, and he was like, "Man, you know," he was like, he was talking. I don't know if it's his son or his grandson. He was like. He he just bought a bass boat and I was trying to tell him to to get one set up just like yours. He's like, you've got it where you can go lake, you can go river. Um, it's you know it's nice and it's quick enough, but it's also going to go shallow. Absolutely. And so man, it 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 was a long time of waiting. Um, it was a lot of hard work that that I put into it, and I'm so excited to get it in in out in duck season next year. Yeah. And get it out and share with other people and maybe do a podcast from there. And yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is too, as I, I think for the, it's the best of both worlds. Like you said, it is, we have a lake that it's a great lake. We talk about it a lot. Clater Lake, you talked about seeing ducks on it just in general, but the Clater Lake runs into the new river and the new river is, is a place where we, we, we're able to hunt and, and be a part of that. But that also goes into a Bluestone or a Summersville and you start putting all these places together and, and even up into Canal, it gets shallow and it gets rocky. And so a jet kind of is more conducive, you know, Bluestone, in general, Bluestone Lake, they'll drop to Winter Pool. At Winter Pool, I mean, all the islands are exposed, everything. It's a mud pit. And you, I mean, you got to have a yeah. shallow boat. I mean, you just, you can't have a, you can have a prop, but it'll probably get busted off. Yeah. You know? And it's still risk. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm a project manager for a living and, and yeah. I look at risk all the time. And, you know, one, one risk that I think we're going to run is that silt, you know, in the yeah. river. We go to a lot of places that are kind of like that muddy, swampy silt. Um, but I mean, I was in, on the lake the other day i was in one foot of water the other day so yeah. i don't know i mean I, i'm sure that it'll go shallow but we'll we'll put it to its limits yeah you know? yeah i mean that's uh, the nature is is if there's ducks over there we might go check them out yeah <laughs> well you know to, to kind of mitigate one of those risks for that silt i'm uh i'm investing in a in a portable winch oh yeah so i, t- I actually saw a guy out in wyoming that did this and uh he actually straps it when he gets in a tight spot he he takes uh his um he takes his anchor out as far as he can, and then he just runs that winch to his anchor, and it's just all right there in your hand. And you just click a button, pulls it to you, keep moving. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's uh, I, as much as I hate it, this podcast is coming to a close. Yeah. We're, we're coming to that part, but I mean, if I if I were you and you're listening, I mean, I'd be out there. I'd try to turkey hunt just a little bit fish a lot and have a lot of fun with friends and family man summer is going to be here before we know it springs right here and we'll be talking about cookouts and fourth of july and all that stuff's coming up soon so get ready with friends and family get out there and fish some and as always happy hunting happy hunting baby Thanks for listening to today's podcast you can find us on facebook and on instagram at the bandage retreat or you can reach out to us directly by emailing us at info at And as always, happy, happy hunting. hunting.